be that. I don't know. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the uh, Dad Fit Podcast. I'm not sure uh, <laughs> if Ricky was going horizontal or landscape. Maybe he fell over. I don't know. <laughs> I switched to landscape mode, but it just made me look stupid. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're more than welcome to switch it if you want. I don't care. I would if I knew how, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it works on the, the phone interface, but. Anyways, like I said, welcome to the Dad Fit Podcast. Uh, today's guest, we got Ricky. I, was, I always want to say Ricky Bobby because I think that was the first way you introduced yourself to us. <laughs> So that that's always stuck in my head, but uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Well, uh, I'm I'm Ricky Bobby, <laughs> I'm, uh, yes. former uh, former Marine, um, dad, and uh, former bodybuilder. Now I'm just more into uh, hybrid athletics. Um, you already know, um, and uh, software engineer. So, nice. Hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we need a, we need more of the uh, software engineers who lift. I was definitely the minority in any classes or anywhere that I've been. <laughs> yeah, man, where, wherever you guys are, you need to come out, man. Come out of hiding. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I see them occasionally online, but uh, definitely, definitely the minority on that one. Okay. But I see you got your bodybuilder uh, filter on, so you're not looking too small today. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who's actually anyone who's not watching the youtube video one why not and two ricky is definitely not small at all <laughs> i'm actually the smallest i've been in a while um i've been on a cut for like the last month and a half and uh i don't know I, you go to that that mental thing where you you look at yourself and you're like man i'm getting small and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so going through that phase right now, that's been yeah. fun. Oh, dude, I, it's it's like a pendulum on both ends. Like when you're cutting, like maybe a month or so in, you're like, oh, I'm getting too small. And then when you're putting on mass, like two months into that, you're like, oh, man, I'm just a fat dude. Not- <laughs> yeah. It's like a, um, it's, it's the, the natural uh, bodybuilder's curse. It's like you either look, amazing with the shirt on and and <laughs> terrible naked or you look amazing naked and terrible with the shirt on <laughs> that's so funny my my goal uh ever since i started lifting was to always just look jacked in like a sweater or a sweatshirt i don't think i've ever hit it yet unless i mean i could maybe find like a, a little kid size sweatshirt and maybe i'd look good in that but <laughs> i remember just any like movies or something i've seen um just the dudes just look jacked in a sweater i'm like man how do they do that shit <laughs> yeah yeah that was my um the way i used to gauge myself is whether or not i'm filling out um uh, like an extra large long sleeve <laughs> no room in it <laughs> oh that's funny so you mentioned you're a marine can you tell a little bit about your background just kind of how you got into athletics in general oh yeah so always been uh pretty much kind of an athlete uh entire life uh started off with football um then moved on to wrestling which was my main sport throughout high school um uh that's pretty good we um won state uh it was that junior year um and from there um i always had slight ego to myself so uh decided to join the uh the Marine Corps. If you want to join the military, might as well be the best. So um <laughs> fighting words for some people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um ironically enough I um I did really well on because it originally I I just wanted the um I wanted a combat MOS. And uh it's kinda of what I had my heart set on and uh I, I did so well on the um on the ASVAB. I was like, hey um you can have whatever job you want. Like <laughs> we, we we save the combat job for the dumb guys. You can you can do literally whatever you want. I'm like oh okay well. <laughs> That's funny. What's uh for people that don't know what's MOS? So MOS is um I don't know what the acronym stands for, but uh it's basically 
your job in the military. So um, if you have a, a combat MOS, then you you're um, you're going to be one of the uh, fighters. It's there's multiple um, multiple different jobs you could choose from. But yeah. um, overall, uh, so mine was a uh, mine was intelligence, and in that billet I did counterintelligence. So it's uh, yeah, basically just the the job you have within the military. That's so and funny. You, yeah, you were too smart to be a fighter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't we can't be losing like, you, Ricky. <laughs> my last my last three years, I still ended up switching uh, to infantry. <laughs> oh really? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna do this forever. I might as well try it out. I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta punch some dudes in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's. Funny. So you went from football to wrestling. Was did, were you able to do those simultaneous, or were they just too intensive uh, schedules to do them together? I could have done them uh, simultaneously. Um, the football is right before um, wrestling season. So just as football ends, wrestling begins. But okay. uh, I once I once I realized I was really good at wrestling, I kind of just like um, during football season I would uh, like I, I trained with them, but I wasn't really interested in playing anymore. So I would uh, it was just all training. So, That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think if I had to redo my high school sports career, I would have definitely done wrestling. Just it carries over to so much more real life yeah. stuff. And yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. I, I really love the fact that like, I didn't, I didn't have to rely on my team for my results. Like we could, <laughs> we could come in dead last place in a, in a meet, but I could still perform like the best in the weight class for that thing. That's I, I love that. It was like, it, it was up to me for how well I performed and it was, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That that hundred percent speaks to me. That's why I like chess and boxing so much. It's yeah. it's a hundred percent reliant on your work before it happens. Like if yeah. you if you don't show up prepared, you're gonna get crushed. There's nothing else to it. You can't wait for your teammate to tackle the dude. You're gonna get your ass beat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, how do, how would you say? I mean, obviously, being a dad and stuff. How do you balance working full time, uh, having a kid, and all your lifting endeavors? So, I would say it's because lifting and I guess overall fitness, like it's a it's a lifestyle. And when you when you truly enjoy the things that you're doing, it's a lot easier to find a way to to fit it into your life. Like, um, and currently, I, it, it, you'll, you'll be able to wait. Like, um, if, if your hobby is video games, you'll find a way to, to get that in. So, and yeah. that's what I always tell my, um, my clients is that, like, the most effective way to lose the weight and keep it off is to enjoy what you're doing. Because you will, you'll stick with it longer and you'll find a way to, to get it in. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely it's, uh, much more difficult if it's like a chore or you have to. Yeah, there's so yeah. much more barriers in front of it because then you're just like, it's so easy to talk yourself out of it. Especially, exactly. I mean, people like us who actually like it, I still have to talk myself into like lifting. And my my gym is in my basement, so I have even less excuses than people. <laughs> but still, there's there's always that resistance, like right before you're about to go. If it's something you truly don't enjoy or you have like a goal in mind that you're working towards it. You're just going to get crushed. It's so easy to talk yourself out of it. Yeah. That's why, um, this is, I forget where I heard this from, but, uh, he was talking about the, uh, the difference between motivation and discipline. Like it's extremely easy to get motivated to get into the gym briefly. And but motivation only lasts me so long. Like I can look down and like, Oh man, I'm getting a little pudgy there. And <laughs> bam, I'm motivated to go to the gym. But, the discipline is what's going to actually keep you doing it. When things get hard, you're disciplined enough to wake up early in the morning and, or stay up late to, to get it done. And the discipline is, is usually what people are missing. Motivation is easy to come by. Yeah. I mean, just watch a quick YouTube video of Arnold. You get oh, yeah. real pumped up. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we're going to go lift the gym. And That's then tomorrow, right you're now. like, ah, oh, 
Man, maybe we don't want to go tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So what, what are you training for right now? Anything in spe- specific? I know you're cutting, but you have any, like, competitions or anything coming up? <laughs> Do I have a competition coming up? Uh, Mr. Spartan Race. I mean, other than the one for. that you're doing with me? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what I'm training for. Um, and uh, as you probably realize by now, uh, by training, I, I mean not actually training, just uh, doing <laughs> weight training and adding some cardio at the end of it. <laughs> that's funny. What What is your lifting routine right now? Currently on a three-day split. Um, and since I have a, a bodybuilding background, still kind of my strength. I still play more primarily like a, a bodybuilding style. Um, it's a three-day split, pretty intense uh, for me at least. Um, I'm gonna try and get that uh that fourth day of rest. Uh, I'm gonna do um. It, and and writing, it's extremely structured and. <laughs> like, uh, but then when I actually get there and I, it's like, okay, what machine is available? So <laughs> sometimes yeah. I, I'll have a plan. I, all right, today's uh back and biceps day. And then I get there, like, you know what? I feel like doing legs. So. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah, it works out though. I mean, yeah, as long as you're going, <laughs> it's, it's got to be a little more difficult to go into uh, public gyms. I mean, I've, I've been to them quite often before and it was always so frustrating people would just be constantly on their phone or just obnoxiously long rest times when i know they weren't strength training i just um so i've been here for about a year now right uh, in this house when i first moved here i didn't really know of any like the area i didn't know the gyms so i went to who planet fitness for a couple of months planet fitness it like, just packed to the brown packed to the brown and then they yeah. removed i remember a few years ago they removed like um like the like bench press uh a bunch of stuff so it's it's very limiting in what you can do as far as um like bodybuilding style workouts yeah and uh there's so many people in there and everybody's <laughs> doing exactly that on their phones a lot of people don't know what they're doing, which is not a problem. Everybody starts somewhere. But uh, yeah. when you have a plan and like, all right, this, this will take me like an hour at most, maybe just 45 minutes and I, I can be done. Uh, so I uh, ended up finding this gym. It's one of those small hole in the wall gyms that like only a few people uh, that are like super serious about go to. So it's nice. never a bunch of people in there at any time. And uh, I'm I'm trying to get like you build my own gym, uh, but since COVID, man, like that stuff has gotten so expensive. <laughs> yeah, I, it's exactly when I stopped adding stuff. Is like the weights used to be maybe a dollar a pound, and now it's up to yeah. two fifty, three dollars a pound. And like, dude, you're not even using it. Just sell it to <laughs> me. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So many people on Craigslist I've contacted, and just like, yeah, uh, two fifty a pound is like. <laughs> Dude, I can see this, the cobwebs and the dust all over it. Just right. I'm, I'm being it's so selfish. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was talking about like the machine, and I was so it was like super rested out, and we were still asking a ridiculous price. Come on, man! <laughs> the, the crazy thing is, I bet they got it too. So, I mean, if I was in their shoes, I would do that too. But still, <laughs> that's funny. So, how old is uh, little man? He's like. He is, he's about to be uh, seven uh, later this month. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's the best month. It's my birthday month also. It's the hottest month, man. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's brutal. I'm not made for hot weather. I mean, my dad was born in Alaska, so I think I have some of that Alaskan blood in me because I'm dying. I've been dying for months. It's it's not for me. <laughs> that's, that's one of the, actually one of the reasons I, uh, I got into like hybrid athletics because um, when I was uh, in bodybuilding, I was bigger. I would sweat all the time, just constantly sweating and trimming down. I was always just good for your heart. Trimming down, I, I'm a lot lighter. I just feel better. I can 
I actually go outside in the summer without melting. <laughs> <laughs> So seven years, what do you think your perspective has shifted on from since having him before him? With him, he, uh, so having a special needs child, my son has uh, Down syndrome and autism, by the way. And he has made me a much more patient person. Um, like me, especially coming uh, fresh out of the Marine Corps and having him, yeah, uh, I I went, he took me from like a constant 10 to <laughs> where, you know, you can't deal with him the same way um, you could deal with most typical children. Um, it, it requires a lot of patience and it really got me there and it helped me a lot of uh, different aspects of life, especially at that time. Um, definitely really needed that. So, um, yeah, I would say patience is always like the first thing I think of when I think about like how, how I've changed as, as a person since he was born. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That, I, that is definitely one of my virtues that I'm lacking or is like the <laughs> smallest, the smallest one that I have. And especially after becoming a father, I, uh, I'm not good at it still. I mean, I'll admit that, but I <laughs> I'm trying to figure out ways to become more patient. And a lot of it is honestly just me trying to remember that it's just a child. Like I, I forget constantly because my oldest is 10 and the baby's a year and a half. And there's just such a huge gap between there, but I expect a lot from the 10 year old. And I'm like, Oh, I forgot. I mean, she's only 10. Yeah. She's her brain isn't even close to fully developed. So she's <laughs> not, she's not going to understand when I'm, trying to explain logically how things work either. But yeah, yeah, trying to trying to just remember and remind myself that the kids is the biggest thing for me so far. I, I like I said, I'm still really bad at it, but Yeah, I'm, I'm I think we're like, hey, we're always a work in progress. We don't have anything to to work on and that means you're already perfect, right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're lying to yourself for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does uh this little man get involved with any sort of fitness related stuff with you at all? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he gets involved by making things as difficult as possible during the workout. <laughs> uh, but he um yeah he does enjoy uh, like when I when I do he's uh he's, he's good at watching uh, observing everything. Sometimes he'll be like, I got him this uh, this little bean like tied up on set. I don't think he's ever touched it. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what he's just trying to make. <laughs> so what's your uh, biggest approach towards your nutrition? Because that's uh, obviously being a bodybuilder, the nutrition is pretty key for growth and also cutting. But do you, do you have any like protocols? Do you kind of just have like, rough estimates for stuff you do are you measuring everything out i do i i do have my scale but um i from answering bodybuilding i was extremely strict about everything I measured everything to the t i was counting all my numbers and everything it was, it was exhausting so <laughs> i i think yeah. yeah that was like the first thing to go and kind of uh, from there, it just went on. I, I was still track things, but it was definitely more of a rough estimate of um, what everything was. Um, I probably just write it down like a like a note app for the day. Uh, okay, and yeah, I haven't been strict about counting macros in years, but uh, the same principle still applies. Um, just if you. I think every everyone pretty much knows what they need to eat. The hard thing is sticking to it and um, avoiding the, the things that are bad for you. I think yeah. it's one of those things everybody knows is just hard to execute. Oh yeah, for sure. Do you have any uh, little <laughs> guilty pleasures? Are you gonna like wake up in the middle of the night and eat a tub of frosting? Or <laughs> 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 the only reason I use that as an example is because one of my buddies 
he uh <laughs> he'd be mad if I mentioned his name, but he uh he's done that several times. <laughs> he said he said he like stole his roommate's thing of frosting in the middle of the night once and he's like, dude, I got a prop. <laughs> Cracks me up. Yeah, I'm a I'm a sucker for um anything cookies and cream, ice cream. So there's there's always at least a pint of cookies and cream ice cream in the freezer. And I look at it and like, not today, not today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that Game of Thrones thing, like, not today for death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it never makes it like more than a few days and then I end up buying a new one. And I was staying there for a few days until I came in. So, <laughs> and um, and I feel like you should you should always you should be at the point where, like, okay, adding adding this for a day that's not going to completely destroy your diet. Like, oh yeah, that, yeah, that's that, that that's the goal at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah I used to be exactly like you, right? weigh everything and track it all and I have spreadsheets and all that nonsense but I did it for so <laughs> long that I don't I don't really need to do it anymore either and I just have such a decent general understanding of nutrition itself that if I mean the only way I would do that again is if I was going to do a competition but other than that just for like day-to-day -day life that is obnoxious and it goes back to what we talked about earlier if if there's more barriers in front of you, the least successful you're going to be. So I don't, I don't track any of that stuff anymore. Have you ever thought about doing competition? Yeah. Um, two years ago, that was the first one I was going to do. I was going to do a men's physique. I was about <clears throat> one month away. Uh, so I had like a six month prep leading up to it. And then uh, my life like fell apart for that last month. Like I got divorced yeah my dog died and all that stuff all within like a couple of weeks. So it kind of derailed me and it's uh that's the excuses that I'm going to use for yeah. it. I thought about it again yeah. recently, but um, I'm, I'm probably going to end up doing, it. I just feel like I, I have to do one just because I like it so much. If you do one, I'm in. <laughs> nice. All right. So we got, <laughs> we got the ultra <laughs> obstacle course coming up. We got the uh, competition, the bodybuilding competition, and then we got uh, strength training. Ultra obstacle course? Oh, yeah. You didn't know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a 50K. It's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll just start with the marathon uh, obstacle course. <laughs> start? <laughs> yeah, you did, you did a couple Spartans before, right? I did a Spartan before, and it was oh, yeah. a uh, it was twelve miles, so not even a marathon, like a yeah, half marathon. That's pretty decent, though. How was it? <laughs> it was hard as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Though. Let's double that, man. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Um, so have you had any like major injuries or anything throughout your uh, fitness career? Oh yeah, the uh my major injury is right clavicle. I uh broke it my senior year of high school um during practice of uh, wrestling and kind of ignored it <laughs> and I was a I was able to I was able to wrestle my last uh the very last tournament of the year. Uh, and so, but since I missed uh, so many, I, I, I didn't make state. Oh, I lost some audio on my side. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're back. In, uh, <clears throat> in a couple of years and, um, after I had joined the Marine Corps by then, um, shore was bothering me. And finally, like, I should get this looked at. <laughs> so I got it x-rayed. And they were like, hey, um, looks like your clavicle was broken and it healed wrong. Like, did you have any, like, is there an injury that, like, you remember that you, you may have broken your clavicle? <laughs> broken clavicle. 
I was like, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, well, you don't need a surgery. Like, All right, I never got a surgery. So now it, it bothers me every so often. Um, oh, damn. Recently, yeah, recently I've, um, like, pinched nerves especially, but recently I, it, it's, it's gotten a lot worse. It's like I'm in a permanent pinch, mer- pinch nerve mode. Like, but uh, it usually doesn't bother me during this. Yeah, really. thankfully, like the time when you have the death weight over your face isn't, it's not yeah. bothering you. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So, yeah, so you mentioned does. your current routine's a three day split. How has that evolved for you over time? Did you like start with a base of strength during your wrestling days or how has that evolved for you? I think. I think strength was always like the 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 motivation behind uh, lifts, especially coming up. Everything was just trial and error. There wasn't a lot of um, like YouTube wasn't uh, really a thing, especially not fitness YouTube. That wasn't really a thing. Um, yeah. Instagram wasn't a thing, even though I'm pretty sure um, fitness influencers are just as useless as nothing would be. But like the twenty year old uh, life coaches. Yeah, twenty year old life coach. Like, what do you have to tell me that <laughs> <laughs> but um everything was pretty much trial and error. Like um I would I'll probably do the wrong thing for so many years and then finally discover like uh, I did it, ended up doing a lot of reading. Um a friend of mine um went to school for uh, sports medicine, so he ended up passing a bunch of things and uh and uh slowly but surely um like knowledgeable youtubers did start coming out and i was able to and i, I pretty much just picked and learned different tiny pieces from everything i could get my hands on and until i i'm still learning today but um yeah traveling there and just doing what uh doing what what works what's effective and um what I enjoy most, even if something is like super optimal, but if I don't like it, I'm not going to incorporate it. It's just, it's yeah, be able to keep doing it. How was the military training? That's almost uh, exclusively calisthenics, no? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It was um, for me and a select few people. Um, it's like they realized that I just sucked at running, so they're like, "Hey." <laughs> 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 like, don't worry about it. You're, you're gonna be our gunner. So they uh... <laughs> don't need to run. You got the guns. <laughs> yeah. So I had the uh, the, the MC, M240 saw, and uh, which, how much did that thing weigh? I don't know. It was, it was pretty heavy. It was a uh, <laughs> machine gun. But um, when I was doing that, I was able to focus more on um, on weight training. But uh, yeah, it, it's almost exclusively yeah calisthenics, running. Um, definitely, I wouldn't say any of the military training is hard. Just annoying. Yeah, getting yelled at while you're working out is not really my favorite thing. <laughs> I would say the the getting yelled at thing is like exclusively. Mm-hmm. Mostly exclusively with a uh, basic training or a uh, boot camp. Oh, okay. Like, uh, a- after you make it to like your first unit, like you might get yelled at a little more because you're the new guy. But usually, it's it, it becomes pretty chill unless you're just bad at everything. But <laughs> if, you're, if you're huge and bad at running, they're still not going to yell at you. They're going to find something else for you to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What what do you think has made you shift a little to hybrid and incorporate a little more uh, cardio into your training? So in the military, um, I um, found out about my hypertension. So wanted to start a uh, start leaning out um, way less. I was in my at my biggest. I was about two fifty, and uh, I, I did a show in two thousand twelve, and that's how. That's about how much I weighed. And I figured um, I cared more about my longevity than my aesthetics. So I um, started, and like with more research, I'll like uh, 
top bodybuilders are dying so young. I'm like, okay, I don't want to do that. Let's, uh, let's do what we can to be, uh, be alive as healthy as we can as long as possible. Yes, and now I have a son. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely shifted my training quite a bit since becoming a father. Is I was obnoxiously selfish before, and I still am to some extent. But now I have other people that will literally die if I don't take care of myself. So it's it definitely uh, shifts your mind a little bit. Like, oh, maybe I uh, maybe I should go for a run despite hating it with a passion. Like it, oh it God, it'll hold strength in my heart a little bit and keep me going there. <clears throat> Um, so you got your three day split. You mentioned you have a recovery day. What do you do? Do you have like active recovery or how is recovery important in your routine? Uh, and that's, <clears throat> that's another thing I had to learn was how important recovery was. Yeah. The recovery day is just as important as the weight training itself. And, um, Years ago, I would just, I would keep going, keep going and going and going, no recovery days. And I don't know, I, I think I may have been like addicted to like the, like that soreness. I, I think, I don't know, I think that, that did something for me. But uh, eventually, the older I got, I really had no choice. <laughs> just, <laughs> like, all right, I, I can't keep feeling like this. <laughs> yeah, your body will catch up to you eventually. Yeah, but luckily, um, the more, you know, um, knowledgeable I became, I realized, okay, recovery is extremely important. I should, um, incorporate these and uh, to the best of my ability. Um, so with recovery, uh, basically, just, I'm not, I, I used to still, uh, run on recovery days, but now I, I don't do, um, anything at all, um, training wise. Just yeah. uh, relax, able to get whatever uh, whatever I need done during that block, and I would be at the gym. Yeah, yeah normal catch up on the normal life yeah. nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> nothing glamorous, but yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's funny that you mentioned like pre YouTube stuff, and it got me thinking. I was like, what what the hell was I doing then? Like, because I've always been active as well, and always done some sort of sports and stuff like that but i'm trying to think of when i started taking it serious i think the first thing that i got uh, so i i initially started with like gymnastics and calisthenics is my like main focus for uh when i t started taking it serious and uh -huh. the the book that i remember reading was called convict fitness i think um and it was I don't even know how legitimate it was, but it was a, a dude who claimed to be in prison. And this was the routine, a purely calisthenics based routine that he used to do in prison. And it had like a, a sequence of 10 workouts um, with progressions that grew it, but it was called convict workout. And that was like the first book of fitness related stuff that I bought that I took serious. You remember, you remember who the author was? It sounds like some Cali Muscle type. Uh... <laughs> I, I know it wasn't him, but it was around the same time that I started taking that hyphen mud. <laughs> oh. Dude, you, I remember we talked about that, the Diet yeah. Coke and instant coffee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That stuff was horrible. But yeah, I was a... so broke back then. That's all. <laughs> Like I need my caffeine, so I'll do, I'll do this. That I'm was so happy once I remember burping that stuff up while I was like trying to lift and be, like burning my throat. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I remember uh, finally being like making enough to where I can afford actual like like good protein pre workouts because I was getting the um like those super cheap Walmart proteins for so long. And tricking myself in a, yeah, I, I like this. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first time I had like Optimum brand protein or like some high quality protein. It's like, wow, it doesn't chunk up and like stick yeah. to my teeth and it like actually has a flavor. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> what is this magic? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So I, I like your gym that you go to now. It seems like Ronnie Coleman would be there. <laughs> just oh, yeah, like a, a hardcore bodybuilding gym. I don't even know if it is, but it just seems like how I work out. Just like this dingy ass basement with spiders everywhere, and just yeah, people just it's, put it's in words. It's one of those, and it, it's got like uh, you know, all the pictures of the um, the bodybuilders that have been in there like, around the walls. Like, it, it's pretty dope. Nice. Yeah, that's the kind of gym that I like. Yeah. My wife absolutely hates that. <laughs> she wants to be in air conditioning and like everyone's in matching outfits and like I hardly wear clothes when I work out. I can't <laughs> exactly. I wear the, the smallest shorts I can find <laughs> with, a, yeah. with a stringer top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's one of the benefits of the basement gym is I usually just work out in my boxers and flip flops. <laughs> Uh, that's funny so future goals man aside from the crazy events that I get you involved in where where are you looking to go here future goals I wanted to uh, get my, my bench press back to a 405 but um, with this cut my strength is so low yeah, that's completely out of the question. <laughs> so time to find some new goals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> move the goalpost. <laughs> yeah, move the goalpost. And, uh, adapt and overcome. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um, yeah, just um, uh, stay successful and uh, put on some put on some clientele. Um. Taking training more seriously, uh, getting back into it, um, and getting absolutely shredded. <laughs> nice. That's fun. Yeah, I'm not sure specifically what I want. I mean, I have, I have like one target goal that I'm working towards. I want to run the, uh, the 350 marathon or 330 marathon the same day I, I do the thousand pound lift. Um, I haven't, I haven't hit the thousand pound club in a while. It's been a few years. So I'm going to, I've been strength training to try to get that back. I'm not too far off, but yeah, I definitely lost a lot of strength. <laughs> I hate, I mean, <laughs> it's so annoying not being able to enjoy your body like it's it's such a it's such a mental issue and i've i've always struggled with that one but especially cutting and losing strength and then it's just like you were said earlier just that vicious cycle <laughs> yeah I, I think it's kind of a it's kind of an ego thing too where we we see like a a, a set number that we were able, once able to easily do and now we're struggling with it and it's kind of kind of messes with your pride like i should be able to yeah. do that and that's what I'm trying to like, not like, uh, like, of course, I don't have the strength of I had it at that point. But so what? I'm still stronger than everybody in this gym right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the strongest person in my house. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> the, the day your daughter outranks you in strength, that's the day she worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if she even starts coming close, I'm going to start panicking. <laughs> They're, my wife and daughter are string beans, so yeah, it'd be so embarrassing if they ever outlifted me on anything. <laughs> that would definitely crush my pride a bit. No, oh, yeah, I'll do it. Speaking of, I don't understand how my dad is still stronger than me. That really pisses me off. I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I saw him maybe like six months ago, but I mean, he doesn't even do anything anymore, and he's still stronger than me. Man, that's that old man strength. You just yeah, it's like it really a, um, is. like in an RPG game where you, you just get perks. It's like I guess dudes just like one of the perks of getting older, like plus ten strength. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every five years he gets that level up. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, let's see here. Let's talk about some role models, man. Oh, yeah. Um, so I know you said 
you started like with bodybuilding and stuff. What made you interested in that side of it versus just getting obnoxiously strong from your wrestling? So what made me want to get into bodybuilding was uh, I was also really into um, into comic books. Well, I wouldn't even say comic books. I would say I would probably just say Superman. Super and Superman. Like I had a bunch of Superman comics, and I remember just you know his aesthetic, his his um, the body, and I, I there's always something like I look up to, and that kind of got me into um, like uh, became a really big fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger, and started following him from there, and uh, I just really appreciated the the aesthetic of everything, so. When I first got into lifting, the number one priority was was aesthetics, strength, and I figured strength will, will come with that, which it did. So, um, yeah, I, I just I, I wanted to look good. I wanted to look like I wanted to be like Arnold. And yeah. eventually, uh, at one point, I'm like, all right, I want to like Ronnie now. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold's getting a little small now once yeah. Ronnie showed up. <laughs> oh man. That's funny. Yeah, I got I got pretty similar experience. Um, wasn't comic books, but it was eighties action figures or action oh, heroes. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> My dad was real big into like Jean Claude Van Damme and just like Bloodsport. Him and I would watch that constantly. And uh, it's something about that and like the combination of my dad and grandparents and all of the males in my family being in the military, there was always that push to just be stronger or better. And the, <laughs> I can definitely remember the aesthetic appeal of just watching Jean-Claude Van Damme just crush oh, yeah. people. And he's like, Oh yeah. my God, he's so ripped too. It's like, how is that even possible? <laughs> yeah. I remember my, my dad was growing up with like uh, Bruce Lee and while he was shredded, he was tiny as hell. And it was, it was just funny to like, oh, so you can be muscular and you can still and fight. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah, I always both. appreciated Bruce Lee from the mental side, but I always just thought he was scrawny. Like, I'm not even that big of a person, but <laughs> thinking about Bruce Lee is tiny too. It's funny you bring up uh, like the 80s, like, uh, like action figures and action movie era, because, um, I was just having a conversation with my girlfriend. She was uh, she was talking about like how Barbie, like the Barbie dolls, like kind of were um, pushing for women to look a certain way. And I was like, "Have you ever heard of He Man?" <laughs> right? Like we had our standards were impossible. <laughs> yeah, it's like, actually man. a good point. I wonder, kids these days. I wonder if they're gonna have something like that i don't i don't know much about i mean i know coco melon but i don't <laughs> no no jack fathers on coco melon but i'm I'm curious because like all of the cartoons and all of the superheroes and stuff when we were growing up were all super jacked dudes as well so uh, i don't see that as much in modern culture i wonder uh how much that's going to influence them i mean it was like the heyday for arnold and the the 80s actions yeah. yeah i was looking at um i was looking at cartoons with my son uh earlier and it's for everything looks well i guess everything kind of looked the same back then too but um like the protagonists usually aren't you know as, as big or aesthetic as they used to be there's, there's still some out there but um yeah shows like uh I'm thinking of the only one I can think of right now. Uh, Steven Universe, I believe. It's a, he's a chubby little kid. And, yeah. Even, right. uh, <laughs> even Dragon Ball Z. I mean, that was something oh, I watched goodness. when I was younger. And yeah. recently, my daughter's been very interested in, like, I guess there's a new version of it. I don't know. But I watched a little bit of it with her. And uh, I was like, where's all the jack dudes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. So being a software engineer, sitting at the desk all day, that sucks. I can uh, 
can 100 percent relate to that one <laughs> um what do you do to break up your day like do you go for walks or anything i that's where the the home gym really comes in handy um Sometimes I'll, I'll go downstairs and have a, a full routine. Just <laughs> come back up and, and uh, stare at the, the bright screen and burn off my retinas for a few more hours. But um, I definitely, I, I can't just do like a, like just an eight hour straight, just sitting down in front of the screen. I have to, I got to get up and do something. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, in our line of work, it's, it's extremely easy to just, um, get complacent and um and to, to, we're on our asses all day. So it it takes a little a little bit more discipline to have to I should probably get up right now and do something. Yeah. yeah. But, Especially once you like get in that flow state. I've I've definitely had times where I'm debugging something and I'm I like look at the clock and I'm like, oh my God, that was like thirteen hours ago. Like yeah. what the oh, hell? Man, what? Yeah. Time, oh. time flies when you are trying to you have a bug or something and you're trying to you're trying to figure something out maybe you just hit a high streak and you're coding and then you look at the watch and like five hours have passed and like, oh <laughs> i forgot to eat lunch <laughs> yeah yeah that stuff's wild how'd you get involved with uh software engineering originally uh, as a as a teenager i did like uh, like like game development Making game for Game Boy Advance. Oh wow! Definitely. And from there, I got uh, that's where I got into like um, different uh, programming languages. Uh, C Sharp was my first one. Then uh, I kind of broke the ice with everything else and. Um, while I was in the Marine Corps uh, as a uh, intelligence analyst, we had opportunities to uh, for like free education on all these other things. Um, so it's I, I pretty much knew I wanted to I wanted to develop something. Just I didn't really know what at the time, um, but I, I knew that that's definitely what I wanted to do with my life, and. Um, yeah, I found software development and um, I don't know, fell in love with still in that honeymoon phase, probably. That's fun. Yeah, I remember that. I was I was there for several years. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what I would do on my free time too. I loved it. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I do it on my free time. Yeah, so definitely a honeymoon phase. I don't want to be dead to it. <laughs> I look forward to it. How were the people in your classes? I'm I'm just um, trying to think of when, like I said earlier, like I was definitely the minority. Yeah. Uh, as far as... I was, yeah, I was always always the 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 biggest guy. I don't think I've ever seen someone that was like actively pursuing bodybuilding in any you know, of these programming classes. Um, yeah, even on the stance of like. Yeah, I, I was certainly a minority. I stuck out like a sore thumb. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you say, "Oh yeah, the the big black guy over there." I'm like, he's the only one. That's got to be him. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Can you talk to me about your uh, your shirt there? I I I know you love that company, right? Oh, yeah. So um, so this guy, and I'm not sponsored, so I don't want to say too much. Screw that guy, something. <laughs> 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 but he was one of the first um like YouTubers that I, I discovered. Uh his name is uh Chris Jones. Chris Jones or Beast Mode Jones. And um yeah, he's one of the first um fitness YouTubers that I discovered. He um he was adamant about like um about being natural and staying natural and uh he was super knowledgeable on everything. Um nice. So, and at the time, like we were in similar, uh, similar places in life. Like he uh, uh, was buying the same cheap Walmart protein that I was buying at the time. That's all I could afford. 
like, it just radiated with me. So when he uh, started the company, Pump Chasers, I was he got my support. And that's awesome, now he's in a much, much better place than I am. I'm like, okay, well. <laughs> and you bought too many of the sleeveless hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, I was yeah. going to say something. I lost it. Uh, oh, well. Oh, yeah, I was going to go back to the, the role models. Um, I know you had mentioned Arnold. I think that's. It's a pretty standard one. Um, do you have any current role models that you follow as far as any hybrid fitness related things or more bodybuilding stuff? Um, as far as, as far as role models, I wouldn't say that there's anyone I consider a role model right now. Um, and that's for the fact of um and i'm I'm older, and most of the people online I'm older than <laughs> everybody's so freaking young now and I was like, <laughs> but there are there are guys uh out there that i um that I do really like um as far as uh I could, uh, do you want to name some names or yeah, why not? Okay, there's um for a very knowledge uh, um a, a big source of uh, of fitness knowledge, whether it's bodybuilding, um it's, uh calisthenics, uh, weight loss. Uh Greg Doucette is a pretty huge um source of information. Yeah. Um sent me several uh, That was the first time yeah. I'd actually heard of him. I was like, Oh man, this guy's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I really like him. He's a um, he's a IFBB pro. He holds a um, he holds a world record in powerlifting for bench or deadlift, something. Um, wow. But uh, so he he has the experience, um, and he's uh, very honest. So I like that. Uh, I still follow uh, uh, Chris Jones. Uh, He's a, a huge uh, source of information. Um, pretty much, I mean, I and I do I do a lot more reading now. So oh yeah, uh, you remember uh, Scooby something? He was like one of the he was, I think he was the first fitness YouTuber. Scooby something. Oh, Scooby. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, yeah, love that guy. You still use his body fat calculator. Oh yeah, Scooby's Scooby's workshop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got the the calipers, and I still use his calculator online. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, was, that was another big one. Yeah, love that guy. But um, as far as, yeah, as far as role models though, ah. yeah, I really don't like using that term. A lot of the yeah, I don't. I I honestly don't think I have any right now either. I mean, I have like idealized versions of Arnold that I still look up to, and I mean the current Arnold is yeah. pretty dope still. But um, yeah, I guess for me it would be Nick Bear or um, just for the like he he started the whole hybrid fitness movement, I suppose. Um, there's a couple others before him, but. He kind yeah. of propelled it and accelerated it um, with his yeah. bear BPN brand and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't really have any. I don't have any role models for fitness, anyways. Not right now. Yeah, and for me, it would probably still be the exact same ones it was when I was little. On yeah. Um, yeah, I used to watch Pumping Iron like every day. It seemed like. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's so funny now because I, I read his I read Arnold's book uh, Total Recall, and then recently his uh, Netflix documentary. Um, but it was just it's just funny hearing how all of that stuff he was just bullshitting the whole time. Just, like, <laughs> yeah. He was just saying hilarious things, and I, I remember <laughs> laughing so hard at all of it. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a very interesting person. Uh, oh, once, yeah. in, once in a lifetime, I think. Yeah, I don't know how you could dislike Arnold. He's, he's iconic, right? I don't. Thankfully, I've never met anyone who has, because I think I might have to fight him. I don't know. Yeah. 
you don't like the, one of the greatest people of all time? That's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I know there's people that like, um, because of the, the whole politics side of things, um, but even then, yeah. like, I, I respect them. Like, he, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want that job. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Especially with California. Bunch Especially of with California. <laughs> No, I got nothing against California. But I definitely wouldn't want to be their governor. That's for sure. I wouldn't want to be an inhabitant. <laughs> I remember reading, uh, or I saw some statistic the other day. It was like uh, country GDPs globally. And it had California, just the state itself. It was like like the fifth highest GDP. And it was comparing <laughs> it to like countries. And I was like, oh my God, you you guys making a lot of money out there, huh? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty wild. <laughs> so I'm glad they're it on our like team. Number five? <laughs> What's that? And it was like number five? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's bigger than like France, bigger than <laughs> not Germany. Germans, they, they're making some money for the e- European Union over there. but Yeah, in Germany. So you got siblings, right? I do. I do. I think, uh, any of them? Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, are any of them as involved or with fitness as you? No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where. I don't know. My my older brother. Uh, he now. I'm an inspiration to uh, to a lot of them. And they um, like uh, trying to get my brother into it now. My oldest brother. Uh, so we're working on it now. And uh, my younger brother is also interested. So I guess now that they see like um, results and whatnot, then they they've taken a, a much greater interest in it. But I'm definitely the only one who's had an interest from the beginning. Um, we're all, we, we've all been athletes, surprisingly, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were, uh, I was I was the wrestler, uh, oldest brother was the football player, and uh, <laughs> I love the camera, he was more of a, uh, he was in the band, which, <laughs> like, it's, that is definitely something. <laughs> something. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Where do you think your drive and love for it came from? Is your I, I don't even know. I don't even know where mine um, came from. So I'm always curious where other people's comes from. Uh, my love of myself. <laughs> 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 Just to be, like uh, I don't know. My I've always held myself uh, like in, in, a, in a pretty pretty high standard. So yeah. like when it, when it came to my even just like intelligence, I I tried to uh, you know be above others or just as, as high as as I possibly could. And yeah. I guess with uh with my fitness, it was no different. And uh, but mainly mainly aesthetics. I, I I didn't care about fitness. It was just aesthetics. I, I didn't care how healthy I actually was at that time, but. <laughs> I think I, I can relate to that. I, yeah. I think I might have told you. I used to be a personal trainer when I was younger, and I was just such an arrogant little asshole. <laughs> I remember actually telling the client that, like, after the session, I'm going to go home and get wasted. And I do that almost every night, and I'm still in better shape than you. Like, you don't have any excuses. So. I, I realized that it wasn't for me back then because I was just such a a, a jerk. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, I've grown since then. But <laughs> you mean that didn't work out? No. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I wish I had that person's contact information so I could apologize. Because I guarantee I didn't apologize on. I was just such a dick. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you got me way beat. I thought I was bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's rough. I'm glad I'm not that person anymore. <laughs> I attribute a lot of that to being a dad. I'll be honest with you, because 
Uh, I mean, I guess getting older also helps level things out for some people, hopefully. But some, some <laughs> people, like, you know, the older you get, like, it's like the less you care what others think. Like, so once they're, <laughs> like, I know some old dudes that are just, they have no filter. It's just, they've gone too long in that, <laughs> in that mode. <laughs> <laughs> There's no turning back there. Yeah. But I, I definitely attribute a lot of that to my brain because I, 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 I'm very introspective and I, I meditate and I try to like just understand myself and like, why, why would I, why did I do that? And yeah. <laughs> I feel like a lot of that's me as a, as a person, but there's definitely a lot of people that don't like to ask those questions and they're afraid of the answers. So oh, I like, yeah. I like that about myself. <laughs> Do you do any meditation at all? Uh, not, not really meditation. Um, I do uh, I have prayer. My father's a minister. I've been. I used to be really heavily involved in church younger. Um, not so much, but I'm still uh, certainly a Christian, and I'm trying to get back into to pray which is for me i would say my form of uh meditation yeah yeah definitely yeah. do you think your faith has impacted your fitness related stuff at all i used to be very involved as well when i was younger um, my my family's really big into it um i don't necessarily think it impacted my fitness or anything but i'm just curious if you think it has for you yeah, I was uh like a lot. I was going to try and bullshit an answer, but no, I don't think there's any correlation between. <laughs> <laughs> Dad was a minister, huh? Oh yeah. Did you grow up in the South also? Oh no, no, I'm a, I'm a Yankee. Well, not really. I'm uh in Ohio, so not South, but not North. <laughs> <laughs> Ohio is its own special place. Yeah, it's own its own special bird in the hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my grandparents live out in Ohio, so I'm I'm somewhat familiar with it. It's they when I was younger, they lived in a more normal part of it, but they recently, maybe a decade or so ago, bought a a house right in the middle of like the biggest Amish settlement within Ohio. So they're just completely engulfed in that culture and surrounded by it. The most stereotypical place you can go in Ohio, like that's all people think. It was like farmlands and Amish people, and that's where they went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. The few times that I've gone to visit them since they moved there, um, just learning about the Amish culture. I don't know much about it, but they've become pretty well ingrained in it, so they understand it. They're not Amish themselves, obviously, but. <clears throat> being surrounded by all of them they have to kind of understand a little bit of how they work and That's there are cool. a lot of there are a lot of things that i appreciate about amish culture that i think would be very beneficial to the rest of the world um the biggest example is they they don't hate technology but they are cautious and they want to understand how it impacts their culture and I think we could have adopted that one a little bit more globally instead of just letting it run rampant. And I mean, I was listening to an interview with, uh, I forgot his name now, but the CEO of OpenAI, and he was explaining how we've already lost the first round against artificial intelligence because all of the social media companies already employ all of that on the back end and they can pinpoint with precision accuracy what kind of person you are just because of the artificial intelligence and to bring it back to the amish <laughs> they uh they they're like i said they're not resistant which was always something i had understood it as but they they slowly let things in they see how it works and if it doesn't crush their culture completely then they're okay with it and oh, like i said so i feel like that would be very beneficial for the rest of the world. Yeah, that's something I didn't understand as well. I thought that they were just wholeheartedly against like uh, technology. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, because when I was there, I was like, that Amish dude's got a cell phone. What the hell is that? <laughs> and then my grandpa was explaining, he's like, yeah, I mean, they slowly let technology in. And like I said, they, they see how it impacts the their culture. And if it's not like severely negative and there are super beneficial things to having a cell phone like that, then uh, they're not going to let all the teenagers have them, obviously. I don't think we they should either. But. <laughs> I don't. There's there's a lot I don't think uh, teenagers. There's a, there's a reason we restrict like a lot of things until you're like 21 or an adult. I think teenagers just aren't ready for a lot of things, and it's it's really beginning to show with the uh, social media. Oh God, yeah, for sure. Maybe like how we were talking about earlier, how they don't necessarily have the cartoons and the action figures, I think they honestly might have it worse now that you bring that up with oh, the yeah. social media because that is so much more fake but appears real to them, especially with their undeveloped brains. Yeah. And, wow, that's that's even more terrifying because I thought yeah. I was being screwed with like Jean-Claude Van Damme, but he was real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you're right because at the very least, I knew that Superman was – a work of fiction at the end of the day. He's a, a cartoon character, whereas they have examples of real people that they can see every day with these amazing lives. And yeah, that, that, that's actually might be a lot worse. Like, yeah, yeah, damn. No, whenever things like this happen to me, I always think of the saying, ignorance is a bliss. Because now oh, yeah. I wish I didn't have that connection in my brain. <laughs> oh, no, it's so much worse. <laughs> Uh, damn yeah and that was <clears throat> that was my biggest hesitancy for social media itself is I honestly could never see any value in it um, I, I initially had a Facebook and a MySpace back in the day just because it was new and exciting at the time um, but that died off pretty quickly I haven't had any social media for like a decade up until yeah, I yeah, it's been about a decade or so for me as well. I had a, I had a MySpace. Uh, I don't even think I ever used it. And uh, I had an Instagram. And I don't care to you know, keep up appearances with things, and I definitely don't care of um, checking in with, with people. Like the, the people that I, that I want to talk to, they we have each other's numbers. And um, I didn't like, cause you know, with, with, uh, with training, we go through phases where like, uh, I'll look amazing in the, in the summer and maybe during the winter, I don't look so great, but with, uh, like social media, you feel the, the pressure. You have to always look fantastic. And yeah, I'm like, uh, like <laughs> let's need to get off of this. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough. And like like I was saying, like the only – I do actually find some value in it now, but that's because I, I've i spent the time to curate it enough where I don't have that constant bombardment with nonsense. And honestly, I only really use it for branding and just to, 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 to grow the dad fit brand. And <clears throat> there is some value in that and – as sad as it is to say, I feel like it's necessary now for oh, businesses. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know any other way to do it because literally ninety nine percent of the rest of the world is on there, and it's it seems silly to just ignore that at this point for a, a growing company like that. But yeah. I me mean, personally, I still think it's garbage. There's as funny as it is to say, I think Twitter is the most beneficial one for me. Like personally, um, I've got the most benefit out of it. And I always had this idea of it in my head as like a big dumpster fire. Like it was just like the worst possible one, but it's, uh, there's, there's meaningful connections I've been able to establish with people on there. And I, I didn't expect that. Yeah. Whereas as Instagram is just so filtered and, complete garbage <laughs> yeah instagram was like uh it's cur it's already curated to like we're gonna show what we're gonna show if you're not already in that 
ecosystem, then you're, you're kind of left out. Whereas oh, yeah. um, with uh, platforms like I guess Twitter, like you can definitely put make a push and and like get out there. Like uh, there's a possibility. <laughs> yeah. There's a yeah. Yeah, social media is wild, man. I don't, yeah. Our brains aren't built to handle stuff like that. We're built to handle small communities, small local communities of social interactions. But when you have direct access to billions of people in the palm of your hand, that, yeah. <laughs> we are too primitive brained for that nonsense. Yeah. Wait, now we have access to everyone's stupid opinion on the planet. <laughs> oh man that one's that one's wild i i've been making conscious efforts to say i don't have an opinion on that because i don't i don't yeah. most of the time i just don't care enough but a lot of it i'm just not informed enough to actually make an educated opinion on it so i'm not gonna spew nonsense just because maybe someone will like it i, I don't know i yeah. don't get that I don't, yeah. it's, funny. it's ironic because I have like this need for external validation for my body, <laughs> but I don't care. I don't care if you care so much about what I think about something else. <laughs> well, I, I understand that. It's... <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully that's been diminishing the older that I'm getting. I was much worse when I was younger as far as body dysmorphia goes and i don't think it ever crossed into the territory of actual diagnosed body dysmorphia thankfully um because i've met a couple people where i think they actually have that and i don't know it's it's wild like that's they, they literally won't even have like a, a crumb of a dessert because yeah. you're like oh dude that's gonna mess up my whole diet like yeah if you're that fragile you can't take a bite <laughs> like, that's bad man you need some you those, need to go to a shrink or something <laughs> those people need help but i do think that a little body dysmorphia is a good thing <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it, it kind of like it kept me like hungry enough to where i always felt like there was there was goals to be met but at the same time, not uh, not so invasive that I'm going to just kill myself and make myself so unhappy to accomplish. But I was like, okay, I need to, I, I can get to this level next. And yeah, I, 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 I think agree. A little bit is pretty healthy. I do too, and I think the pendulum swung the complete opposite way, and I don't think that's good yeah. at all. Like the body yeah. positivity. I understand the general theme and sentiment of it, um, but the caveat with that, it, there, there is health issues. Like you can't just be morbidly obese and be healthy. That, that's not possible. And a lot of people don't want to accept that. Yeah, I think I think everyone deserves to like. If you wish to look a certain way, then we're, we're Americans. Go for it. But you should have the 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 true information presented to you as to like the health benefits or risk that this will be because what they're doing now is like um saying they're just yeah straight up saying that uh, uh, there's no uh risk of heart attack with with fat and that's not true though we know that to be untrue yeah um, yeah that's the part of the body positivity movement that I can't ever agree with. I, yeah. Like I said, I, I agree with the, the general sentiment and exactly what you're saying. Like you look however you want. It makes you happy, be comfortable, but don't say that you're healthy. I, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't get behind that. Yeah. And that is also difficult because what exactly is healthy, quote unquote. So it's, 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 a, it's an interesting subject. And that's one of them that I do have opinions on and I, could talk to people about but that's because i've spent the time to educate myself on it and i'm not just going to spew nonsense because right. i want to be loud and i want people to look at me and <laughs> well, well you do know that the loudest person is the winner of the argument so. <laughs> uh, it, it's so true sadly the loudest person it's it just makes me think of uh, have you ever watched like formal college debates or like any sort of like formal debating oh. classes 
Yeah. Dude, speak like 400 words a minute. Be, like, all right. <laughs> How is this a debate? Just because you said more. I don't know the rules of it or anything like that, but I, it's just obnoxious to listen to. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's extremely. I've, um, I, I started listen to, listening to more debates, and it's like you can tell like the people that are very good at debating are going to do their debating thing and the people that are bad at it are just going to raise their voices <laughs> but like they're, they're both just a waste of time <laughs> that's funny i'm all for healthy debates but yeah formal stuff it's it's, it's obnoxious yeah. and especially when they just start attacking the person personally like all yeah, right yeah, you're in it. <laughs> Well, we've been going for a little over an hour, man. Um, I don't have any other questions. Do you have uh, anything you want to plug? You, I know you don't really do social. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got, I got no social medias at the moment, so uh, nothing to plug. But uh, <laughs> stay, about, tuned, uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. With uh, yeah, stay tuned. I'll be involved with, um, uh, more um, dad fit coaching. Um, well, stay tuned. <laughs> right on, man. Oh, perfect timing. My, there you go. He is crying now, so. <laughs> I'm surprised. Mine, uh, mine took a nap, like, right when we were starting. I'm surprised he's not up. Yeah. Good, Good timing, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, like I said, appreciate you coming on, man. It was... Hey, no problem at all. Thanks for having me. I, oh I was surprised how much you. that I, uh, I enjoy this, because... I, I don't know. I, I just maybe I'm just so starved for attention or like interaction, <laughs> interaction with outside people because I work from home. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I appreciate you coming on, Ricky. You're uh, obviously you got the bodybuilding filter turned on, so we can, oh, we yeah, can see. turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't flip it off before I stop recording, though. <laughs> All right, man. Okay.